Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Todd Cheek coming at you, you know, with another episode of Living Your Best Life. And so I always want to say thank you so much for giving us some of your time this afternoon, this morning, this evening, uh, whenever, wherever you are in the world right now. Uh, of course, you already know what we do on the show is we invite these awesome professionals on to talk about what they do and how what they do is contributing to a healthier society, a wealthier society, just a better society in general, right? That's what we do. And and so um, these people out there are in the trenches helping people do just that, live their best lives. And today, everybody, listen, you're going to really enjoy the show today because I enjoyed so much sitting down with this doctor um, uh, as she talked about her approach to becoming well. Because when we think of doctor, we think of the, the person in the, of course, the, the stethoscope and the mask and the white coat, all of those things. And uh, so that's not always the case. And so uh, Dr. Nayo Wills is going to talk about her approach. And she's going to, I, what I really enjoyed about her today uh, on this interview, because her approach is like holistic. And, and she is a, a functional medicine uh, doctor. And along with her, you know, traditional uh, medicine uh, practice. And so, but she is more so focusing on helping people heal from within. And that is a, I think, a key component uh, when it comes to health care uh, and taking care of yourself. Now, these days, we have to learn to how to how to get well, of course, how to be well. But we all we have to really learn how to become well with it. And so what does that entail? Well, of course, the mindset. OK, because that healing comes from within. All right. So we're going to be talking deeply. And if you ever wanted to, we're going to be talking deeply about meditation. And if that was ever a uh, uh, an intrigue uh, to you, she's going to break down some real benefits of why we should use the practice and the art of meditation. Along with, we're going to be talking about adrenal health and a lot of other things. So you're really going to enjoy this uh, show today. So anyway, everybody, 50, if you are above 50 years of age, I'm telling you, stop eating certain foods, okay? And if you can't stop eating them, then drastically reduce. But to know what those foods are, I want you to download the down, the, the, the uh, PDF file uh, to find out what those foods are, okay? Find out what they are, download them, and definitely, you know, see if you can do away with a few of those things, okay? Alrighty, so listen, everybody, we got Dr. Nia Wills coming on to talk about her profession, her uh, uh, expertise in terms of how to get well, all right, from within. All right, so everyone, I'll see you on the other side of this short commercial. Y'all take care. Be good. Bye-bye. So welcome back, everyone, of course, to the show, Living Your Best Life. Like you said in the in the intro, my name is Todd Cheek. And uh, listen, like I said, also, I want you to get on that challenge, all right? Jane, not January, but June 6th is the start date, the 30-day challenge. So I definitely want everyone uh, to get on that challenge. Make that June 3rd, okay? We're going to make that June 3rd. That is that Monday is going to be the kickoff to the challenge right after the holidays uh, coming up this week. So, uh, of course... Everyone knows what we do on our show, right? We go out there and we find these professionals that are out there helping people live their best lives. And today you are going, you're in for a treat. I uh, had the opportunity to speak with uh, Dr. Nayo Wills and I had to really, you know, uh, ask her before, okay, how do you pronounce your name? <laughs> you know, because I was going by Nayo. And so, but uh, she told me that it was Nayo, Dr. Nayo Wills. And I welcome her to the show because I think when it comes to... Uh, my experience, and she can share differently, of course, my experience with the with our medical uh, system here, um, healthcare system here, is that it needs some it needs some help. And uh, she, her approach is awesome, and I love what she's doing. And I want I don't want to steal her shine, so I am going to welcome her and let her share a little bit about who she is and what she's all about. So, Dr. Naya Wills, thank you so much for coming onto the show this afternoon. Hi, so thanks for having me, Todd. It's great to be here. I'm excited to spend some time with you and uh, just have a good conversation. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. So share a little bit about us, you know, who you are, because I think you come from like a, a, a family of like doctors and things like that. And uh, give us some of that background, because that was pretty intriguing. Yeah. So um, my father is a family physician. And so that's who I first had my first experience to to kind of witness what I thought was medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's a family physician. And I actually now know in retrospect, I was really looking at someone who knew to have healing relationships with people. So that's how I kind of got my entrance into the world of uh, wellness and, and healthcare. And um, I'm actually an internist. I'm boarded in internal medicine. However, I exclusively practice functional medicine, which is just looking at how six areas or systems in the body work together or aren't properly working together to support wellness. And so that's 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 where my sweet spot has been over the last 15, 16 years. Awesome. So of course I want to hit on those six spots right quick. If you don't mind sharing us, sharing with us what those six spots are when it relates as it relates to functional medicine. Absolutely. So the the main ones that the main areas that we think of are uh, hormones, which would include like your sex hormones, your stress hormones, your thyroid hormones. So that's one area. Another area is cardiometabolic. So that's looking at your cardiovascular system and metabolic health. So that's all your different um, hormones that influence your metabolism and blood sugar and insulin regulation. Um, so that's one area. The third area would be energy. And that's one mm -hmm. of my favorite ones to explore now, which could also include uh, hormones, but it's oftentimes a lot has a lot to do with mitochondrial health. So that's mm. one of the different organelles um, in our cells that actually help, and they specifically help to generate energy. So that's one system, one other system that we look at. Um, we also look at detoxification, the body's ability to biotransform and eliminate toxins. So that can even be environmental exposures that we're having. That could be toxins that we're taking in through our water supply or food supply, medicines, et cetera. So that's um, one area. And then we have a, our immune system. So how is our immune system supporting us uh, to optimize optimal um, immunity, preventing autoimmune diseases, um, not having allergies, different things like that. So do we have an intact, healthy immune system? And then the last area is probably a, is one of the foundational pieces that we have to look at in folks, and that's the digestive system. So our GI tract, um, mm -hmm. when there's disturbance in there, because the microbiome, 70, 80% is in the digestive tract, when there's imbalance in the gut, that tends to really create a lot of disorder throughout our whole system. So those are your core six areas that functional medicine uh, practitioners are looking at. Wow, that's a lot. Um, and, you know, one of the things that struck me is, is like you were saying, one of the things that you focus on, which is energy, and, you know, starting at the mitochondrial level. Uh, um is that a problem in, in our society? Are we just that tired? And if we are, uh, why are we so fatigued? Yeah, so absolutely. It's it's actually becoming more and more of, of an issue. And it can literally show up just as fatigue. So I don't have the energy to do X, Y, and Z. But it also can show up it, as our ability to be able to to have different processes in the body take place in an effective and efficient way. So on a cellular level, are, are the systems able to get what they need to work properly? So that could look like neurodegenerative diseases. So that's like Alzheimer's, um, Parkinson's disease. That could look like um, having issues with um, anxiety, depression, mental health issues, mm -hmm. It, it's it's really vast in terms of how much the mitochondria support. So basically mitochondria, we call them organelles. They're these little um, tiny parts in, and you have many in each cell. 
And they are responsible for generating energy, which is basically money in our body. So if you can't generate the proper amount of energy in the body, you don't have anything to spend and able to buy whatever you need. So if there's a particular process, a different system in our body needs, like let's say our brain, and if we don't have healthy my mitochondria that can help to produce the energy to perform that, there's no money to spend to get what you need. So mm -hmm. it really is becoming more of an issue. But the great news is, because I'm not a gloom and doom doctor, the great news is there's so much that we can do to reverse yeah. this and to prevent you know, mitochondrial dysfunction. And this is one of the hallmarks of aging that you'll hear folks talking about um, to prevent aging in a, in a very pathologic way. So in a breakdown way, in a way of aging prematurely, mitochondrial health is, is one of the cornerstones of this. Wow. So help is on the way if it's not already here then, right? Yeah, it's, it's here. It's here. And it's yeah. of course evolving, but there's just so much we can do. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, because coming from where I come from, you know, I come from the this the, the the fitness space and exercise and movement space, right? And that can be demanding for depending on the population or the geographic population at the time. So if you're talking to someone that's probably in their twenties it's a different conversation versus if you're talking to someone in their fifties. So the person in the fifties might be a little bit more, you know, stressed out in life. And so what things break down the mitochondrial function or their, you know, their, their, their being able to, the capability to perform optimally. Uh, is it diet? Is it lifestyle or what, what are some of the things like? Yes. And yes. So yes. And you know, the interesting, yeah. okay. Thing is, okay. Gotcha. The interesting thing is, is that, you know, more and more because there's so much information out there, it, our 20 year olds are now catching on to this and they're That's actually ahead of things because they're actually able to prevent some of these um, pathologic things that take place. So the body is like a beautiful system, which is what I love to remind people of that it really is very resilient and really will respond to good information if you have the proper inputs. And I always tell my clients the most important thing to be monitoring and ensuring that you have healthy ones are your thoughts, because that's the energy that your system is bathing in. So literally your thoughts, whether they're of a more high um, positive energetic frequency or lower, more breakdown frequency that literally can tell and will tell your different cells, whether you are in breakdown or whether you're in, in wellness. And there's so much si science is now catching up to prove this. So there uh, is a field of science called epigenetics, which means above mm -hmm. the, the gene and what that is now proving is very much what I just said, that even though you may have a ge genetic predisposition to diabetes, let's say, you, your choices with the way you think and your outlook on life, what you eat, your lifestyle choices, so you know very much in your world, are you moving, are you utilizing your body in a healthy way, all of these choices, they will actually sit above the gene and they'll decide whether you turn that gene on or off. So even though you may have a genetic predisposition to something, it does not mean you have to turn that gene on. Same thing, they're finding this with cancer. And they've looked at twins who have the same genetic predisposition to something. And this is one of the ways that they've, they've come to find this out is that a different lifestyle choice, what I think about um, what I'm eating, whether I'm moving, how I'm sleeping, all of these choices and decisions that we make on a moment to moment basis actually determine whether we turn that gene on or off. Wow. Body is amazing. <laughs> it's beautiful. And if we just love it and give it what it needs, it's, it's, it's incredibly resilient. Gotcha. How do you start your day? <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, it's really important. I love that question. Um, meditation. So yeah. every yeah. morning I get up and I meditate for an hour and then I will read my spiritual reading. Um, so I'm setting, you know, off, you know, in the right direction and a higher vibration, a higher energy state, 
which really I can tell a dramatic difference because I've been doing this for years back from when I didn't do that, when I just got up and got into my day and I didn't set any tone or vibration. And I, I know that that sounds like a lot for some folks to even wrap their head around. So I tell my clients, just start with two minutes with an app. And it doesn't matter that your mind races, just every time it races, bring it back to the present moment, because that's really what we're trying to do with meditation. So that when you get out into the day and life happens, that you can realize life is happening and come back to the present moment and not just be taken away with whatever situation is in, is occurring in the world. So don't be overwhelmed or um, intimidated, intimidated by the practice of meditation. Just lean into it and, and don't make yourself wrong with it. That's what I was going to say. I think we're trying to be right uh, with meditation in terms of like, you know, what am I doing wrong? So we're, we're, we're posting all of these questions in our minds as even we are, because this is what I do, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm speaking for myself here. And, and, and so my thing is I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm, I'm trying, let me say, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm trying to have that, that moment of just quieting the mind. And of course the mind roams. And, and so then I become critical of myself because I am not a, controlling my thoughts. And, and so then it the breakdown occurs because now it's like, ah, oh, what's to use because I can't quiet my mind. So then it's, 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 it's almost like a belling out at that point in time. So, right. yeah. So is, is that a process that most yeah. and it's people an take or you have experienced or? I, absolutely. From my personal experience and what I hear from others, absolutely. And I once had a yogi tell me that every moment you sit on the mat and that you're willing to keep coming back to the present moment over and over again, it's it's literally putting money in, in your spiritual bank. So it's mm -hmm. really giving you more life, basically, the more that you're willing to do that. And the other thing that we know about meditation is if you could actually... Um, put it in a pill, it is the most powerful thing that you can do. It literally down regulates your inflammatory markers. It balances your neurotransmitters that govern mood and brain function. It balances hormones. Really every system in the body is touched and helped by meditation. So if we can just start, and like you said, I think what you said is brilliant. If we cannot be intimidated by it and just make it our own and don't make ourselves wrong about it because there is no wrong way to meditate other than not meditating. That's, that's the only yeah. way that you can be wrong. And even that's not wrong because eventually, you know, if it makes sense to you, you'll pick it up, but just, just start something that, that makes sense to you. Yeah. And, and so what I have uh, started to do on several times I've started to do this um, is I'll, you know, I'll put something like a binaural, uh, you know, a tone in my ear mm -hmm. uh, just so I can, you know, uh, balance, you know, those, uh, those, uh, those things right there. Um, and so I guess the main thing is just starting. And, and uh, now when you say that what you have found out is that starting meditation and, and and practicing it on a regular basis is just as powerful as, you know, some medications out there in terms of overall wellness. Um, we in this society, you already know, uh, because you're coming out of like the Maryland, D.C. area up in there. Correct. Right. So, you know, and I used to live in, you know, New York City, and it's a fast-paced world that we live in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And with that fast paced world, what do we want? We want fast results. So therein sometimes lies the problem, I think, because we are so attached to fast results or quick results. Is that something that you have to just, you know, guide people through to say like, okay, we have to. But I would even, I would even dare to say that you will get some fast results if you're not in a state of resistance, but you're in a state of allowing because- okay. If you're willing to sit in meditation, so let's say you're having a really bad day, something's happened that's upset you. If you're willing to go sit down, put on binaural beats or, you know, just a good app 
uh, with a guided meditation or just with music that can kind of just, you know, put you in a, a more calm mode. And then you start to either use your breath or just to, you know, center yourself in, in the present moment. If you can even do that for a couple of minutes, you will feel different within a couple minutes. Now, you may not yeah. be in the perfect state of complete health that you want to be at the end of that. But if you do it every day, eventually you can certainly get there along with adopting, you know, the lifestyle things that we need to do along with that and taking care of ourselves. But you you will get some immediate results. So okay. I, don't, I don't want people to feel like the only time I feel like you don't get anything out of meditation is when you're making yourself wrong. Or if you're trying to go in and get something in particular, mm. or if you just are in a state of resistance. But if you're just going in there and you're willing to have, you know, uh, a deeper experience with yourself, you should have some shift in your energy, even within minutes. And there's so much data to support this. There's a um, an institute called the HeartMath Institute, which has got tons of data. And they have looked at um, something that they term heart-centered breathing, which is a form of meditation. And so basically you close your eyes, center your attention at the center of your chest, which we call your heart. And um, then you trace your breath in and out of the center of your chest. And then you mm -hmm. bring something into your mind that makes you happy, but something neutral, like a sunset, a sunrise, a child playing. So you do those three steps, close your eyes and center your attention at your chest, start the tracing the breath in and out of the center of your chest, and then bring something into your mind that makes you happy. You do that for three minutes and you'll enter something called a state of coherence. Coherence is when the heart rhythm becomes more healthy and a more, um, it basically is a signal to the rest of your body that you're in a state of wellness and health. It then will instruct the brain and every other system in your body to get into harmony and to be in a coherent state so that the whole system is working together, which is the opposite of what's happening when you're stressed. When you're stressed, you're in a state of incoherence. When the digestive tract digests when it wants to, your heart is not necessarily beating in a healthy, supportive, nourishing rhythm. Your um, your kidneys may not be filtering the way that, you know, they should or in the, the manner that they should. So the more that you can get into this state, this is just showing you that meditation, which this specific form they've looked at called heart center breathing, it literally pushes your whole system into a state of health. And they found that if you can do this for three minutes, three times a day, it's very supportive of creating health. And the data is it's 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 amazing on this. So it's 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 just really being willing to to take it on. Gotcha. Well, wow. you know, I and I should know. <laughs> let me let me and I should know because you know I've followed these types of practices for so long. Uh, but I am one of those people who is all about the the go, 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 and never really kind of like bringing it down. So thank you so much for the reminder of that, because now I'm like, and this is why I love doing what I do, because I get to, you know, connect with uh, professionals like you that remind me of what I need to be doing. And uh, so this is once again, everyone, like I said, uh, you've heard me say before, this is a masterclass, not just for me, but anyone listening. This is coming from a, a, a awesome doctor here. So definitely take heed of this information. And uh, practice it, put it to use, please. So now you talked about something with regards to inflammation. And I want to talk about, you have like a, a, an ebook or a book on your site called Know Your Numbers. Yeah. And uh, that is important. And so what are some of the numbers that we should know? Uh, and I have an idea of some of the numbers that we should know, but this, do we, can we go beyond some of those numbers? Uh, and, and I don't know if that's in your book or not. So, Yeah, so um, it's a great question. Um, so everybody knows you should know your blood pressure. You should know, um, maybe even know your blood sugar, things of that sort. But And those are important. So I, we're definitely not throwing those out. But there's some routine functional labs that most functional medicine doctors are going to check. So you mentioned inflammation. Some of the, the ones that we'll check right off the bat are something called a C-reactive protein. 
are an HSCRP, which is a high sensitivity C-reactive protein. And that's marker of inflammation. The HSCRP can tell us a lot about heart inflammation. And then a CRP in general can tell us, are you in a very inflamed state? So if you get this, even your primary care can order it. If you get this and this level is, is high, it's telling us that you're in a state of inflammation. Now that could be acute. So you could have just injured yourself or just had a upper respiratory infection. And that could explain it. If it's uh, something that's persistent and it's not just a, a transient illness, then it's something we, that's telling us your, your body is in a state of chronic inflammation. So that's, that's an easy one that any doctor can check for you. Um, so that's one that I like to check all the time with my clients. Another one um, from an inflammatory standpoint that maybe people don't think of as much um, is ferritin, which is an iron storage marker. If that is high, that also can be a sign of inflammation um, in the body. So that's one that we'll also look at a lot uh, to help us to know. Then you have some inflammation markers on your metabolic panel. So two liver markers are AST and ALT, and they'll tell us if your body is either um, being uh, challenged with a to high toxic burden, or if there's a lot of inflammation in the liver that can be telling us that. It could also tell us about your metabolic health. So there are a lot of inflammatory markers that we can look at that can come on just routine tests. And then probably something that's really important in terms of blood sugar, since we mentioned it. So everybody knows that you'll probably with your primary care, get a fasting blood sugar. Overall, you want your blood sugar to be somewhat in a um, an overall, not exactly a straight line, but you don't want wild swings in your blood sugar. You kind of want it to go up and then down a little bit, but you want it to kind of stay in a sweet kind of range so that your body doesn't like wild swings and things. So um, you want your average um, or your fasting blood sugar to for sure be under a hundred, but you know, even sometimes in the mid nineties fasting is, is what we're looking to see for your black, your fasting blood sugar for an A1C. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure probably most folks have heard of this one, but just in case you haven't, a hemoglobin A1C, most primary cares are checking that these days. That will tell us about um, your average blood sugar over three months. So what it's actually looking at is how much are your um, blood cells, your hemoglobin in particular, how much sugar is 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 on that on the surface, and the more the higher the amount of sugar, the higher the A1C. So you'll see a lot of primary cares that are fine with an A1C of 5.6, 5.4. I'm really trying to get my clients down to five because that means five or less, because that really means that your average blood sugar is below, you know, mid nineties on average, which is better for your brain, your heart, your immune system, et cetera. And then probably the last one, just to give you one more that I like to check for blood sugar is your fasting insulin. This is another easy one your primary care could check, but probably will not. And this is one of the first ways we can pick up insulin resistance. So your fasting insulin should be under five. If it's above that, you're in a state of insulin resistance, which means you could pick that up well before that A1C goes up, well before your fasting blood sugar goes up. And we want that because the more that we allow the blood sugar to be too high for a longer period of time, it's inflaming your, your, your system. It's also supporting cardiovascular disease changes. Um, it's suppressing your immune system in certain ways. So it really is an, an easy one to check and, and get an idea of where are you from a metabolic standpoint. Wow. You know, years ago, I remember it was kind of difficult at least in the Bronx, when I, when I lived in New York, it was difficult to get a a, a, a test on my uh, CRP uh, levels. Uh, my doctor was like, they almost didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Oh, really? And, yeah, I was kind of like, this should be, you know, part of your 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 testing platform in terms of labs. But uh, I, I, because at the time, I was thinking to myself, if we had at least a small bit of that, you know, part of that knowledge as it relates to CRP. Um, 
then you know we'll know that we're highly you know inflamed or just you know uh, open for all types of you know uh, potential issues when it, when it comes to health. So, like I said, but the doctor had like had really didn't have any idea on what it was, and I thought that was really really strange. But I think over time, you know, right now, I think we have become more, yeah. uh, you know, technical. Yeah. And we, we've upgraded and, and all of these things. And so I think now we understand the importance of all of these other numbers. And so uh, beyond, like you said, your blood pressure and or your cholesterol and, and A1C and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Oxidative stress, that seems to be um, a, a really you know, I, it comes from all over. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so the things that, that, you know, causes this oxidative stress, can you share a little bit about what your knowledge is of oxidative stress, how it, how, uh, you know, the damage that it can potentially do and how do we, and can we reduce it? Yeah. Um, another great question. So oxidative stress, the way I explain it to my clients, because I don't ever like to make anything boring or, or too complicated. So I just explain it that it's basically goes along generally with chronic inflammation. And if this, whatever is causing this, this reaction in the body, if it's not cleared, it creates oxidative stress. So which that really means it's an imbalance in the body. And that imbalance creates rust, is what I would liken to rust, which is oxidative stress in the body. That leads to breakdown in systems. It's very important because it's involved in a lot of the disease, um, uh, the progression of disease and generation of disease in the body. So the more that you can catch it earlier on and then do things to reverse it, the better. And so some of the things that you can do, it, it of course depends on what is the root cause. So your functional medicine provider can start to look at there are certain tests that would, we would be looking at. There are certain key questions we're going to get from a functional medicine history, but we can start to figure out what is the root cause. Cause you don't want to just give a supplement or a diet mm -hmm. program and you're not actually addressing the, the root cause. So we have to figure out what's the root cause. And then from there, based on what we find out in the history and on labs or examination, et cetera, then we would actually add, add key nutrients and, and things in the diet. But some classic things that you'll um, have people introdu introduce um, in the right balance would be antioxidants or something like a glutathione is very important for uh, antioxidant. It's, it's one of your most important antioxidants. It's often called the master antioxidant. So that's one that that might be incorporated. NAC is a precursor to glutathione. A lot of times we may use that in conjunction with glut glutathione. Um, and then there are different nutrients in the body that also serve as antioxidants, but you can get a lot of them from your diet. So one of the things you'll probably hear me and other functional medicine providers speaking about is eating the full color of the rainbow. So I know that sounds hard, but the more that you make it a practice, it can become easier and easier. So looking at the rainbow and there are charts out there where you can see the different red fruits and vegetables, the orange, the yellow, and the more you hit each of those colors, each color is associated with different properties and phytonutrients that have different antioxidants that can reverse oxidative stress or supply basic vitamins that will help um, with the reaction that generates oxidative stress in the body. So I always do try to do food first um, when trying to, to reverse something other than working on your thoughts, as, as I said before, but food first and then think about supplements. Gotcha. Food first. That's that's always my thing. <laughs> you know, um, you know, and, and then like I said, these are things that, you know, that have played my mind, you know, for, you know, quite a while. And I'm always instructing, you know, my my uh, clients to uh, pay attention to the things that can create uh, stress on the body uh, as it relates to the work environment or uh, um, the air we breathe or the food we, you know, consume uh, to 
cool that system off in terms of the oxidative stress. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I do want to speak to you about is, is, is detoxification. Um, the body can, of course, do it on its own uh, in terms of, you know, detoxification. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, either the older we get, the, the, the less uh, uh, capable the body becomes at detoxifying itself. Do we need help in terms of an outside uh, type of curriculum to follow with regards to detoxification? Or should we just rely on the body to do it on you know, itself? Yeah, that's a complica complicated question because there are certain people, if you just really had, you know, clean, high thoughts and a really clean diet and lifestyle and you were out in nature and maybe you weren't exposed mm -hmm. to a lot of Oh, toxin, yeah, sure. Then, you know, potentially, yes. However, I don't want to say it's just a function of age, though, because it's it's more it's 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 time in the sense that the longer that you're around, the longer you have to accumulate toxins. So yes, in that sense, but I don't want people to get the impression that just because you're getting older, that that equals um, that you don't have the ability to detoxify because because you still do. It's just you've had a longer period to accumulate toxins. And if you're not supporting those systems and or the systems aren't working as well as you get older because of more pathologic aging, then then that's that's eventually going to be an issue. But there are definitely things that I think make sense. So I actually just did a, a talk on this and detoxification is one of my favorite things to speak about because it, a lot of times when people are talking about detoxification, they're really just talking about the liver. And it's mm -hmm. it's much more complex than that. And if you just start putting on a bunch of supplements to detox via the liver, if those certain pathways in the liver themselves are not supported and opened up, it actually could make someone feel worse. And there are other systems in the body that need to be supported to su support detoxification. So it's the body really is an elegant and beautifully designed system that if you kind of listen to and pay attention what it needs, you it really is um, um, something that really can work in our favor. But you do need to know how to listen to what the cues are and what the system needs. But there are a lot of things that, that you can do on a regular basis to support it. So I keep hitting it and I know that I'm saying a lot, but those thoughts, that's huge. Yeah. Detox your thoughts detox your spaces that you're in a lot of um clutter and things that that is is not good for your system and it even though it may be subconscious you still pick up on that then think about um are you drinking enough water every day and like clean water um room temperature water so it's not a shock to your system are you drinking enough water to flush your liver to flush um your whole system to to allow toxins to be removed are you sweating every day? So sweating is a key one. People oftentimes forget that if your skin is a major organ, and if you're not sweating regularly, which I see a lot in people who are stressed, a lot of times if your adrenals are not healthy, you won't sweat as well anymore. So we've got to get folks sweating again, because that's a, a major mechanism. Breathing. So doing breath work, getting out in nature where there's a lot of greenery, where you're getting, you know, really clean air um, uh, to breathe. Have a lot of green plants in your home that are gonna be filtering your air. Think about getting an air, air filter. So these are kind of basic things that, that you can be doing on your own in the gym. After you have a really good workout, go to the sauna or if they have an infrared sauna, even better. Start, you know, detoxing again through your skin that way. And then the one thing that I often see that people don't pay attention to enough is, are you moving your bowels every day? And I know that's yeah. not a conversation people want to have, but if you're not moving your bowels one to three times a day in a healthy way, then you're retaining toxins and they just mm -hmm. keep recirculating in your system. So there are lots of things that you can do without even going to a functional medicine provider if you're healthy and you feel like you can just up your up uh, upgrade your own uh, practice, but we do need to actively, you know, be taking ourselves on. Wow. Gotcha. 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 And, uh, you know, one of the things that, as, as you were speaking about earlier, uh, that caught my attention, uh, do you 
perform any kind of genetic genetic testing uh, programs? Do you have the ability to do that? Or... They, there is the ability to do it. I don't tend to do it a lot, um, okay. but a lot of functional medicine doctors will do it. And it's just kind of my own way. Um, I, okay. it's, I just don't do it a lot, but it, it's okay. definitely out there. Gotcha. Gotcha. It was something that, um, uh, that's, you know, that, that I saw on the, um, uh, that's coming up, you know, a lot of people are looking at these, uh, particular testing platforms as an expanded way to kind of like know where we are and know where we are going right. in a sense and all, um, I would love for you to tell us, Doc, you know, where we can find you for one thing, you know, and and and, and so because I love your approach. I mean, from from like the meditation point and perspective uh, all the way, to, you know, to, you know, the food that we put in our bodies, because I think that's something that is so overlooked. Um, we always we always hear about the food we put in our bodies. And nutrition and things like that but we don't hear about these other uh, approaches such as meditation uh at least not to the point where these things uh can change our health and um you know we always hear about how it can you know reduce stress of course but we don't relate stress a lot of times to our overall health we right. haven't been i think you know uh, taught that enough so where can we find you out there so my website is drnayo.com, just D-R-N-A-Y-O.com. Um, so you can go there and um, you can find me. Um, I also, um, if, you, if you're interested, you can email me at drnayowills at gmail.com. And that's just D-R-N-A-Y-O Wills, W-I-L-L-S at Gmail. And I actually have a... Um, a portal for my clients and members. And I do talks, which I release regularly, which have a lot of tips that where we really get into it and give specific recommendations around, I shouldn't say specific because they're not tailored toward the individual, but give really solid resources for folks to be able to know, okay, well, we just talked about detoxification, but how, how might I really start to approach that? So if you want to become a part of that, you can email me and let me know, and I, I can get you involved with that. And then if you want to be a client, just reach out to me, all the information's on my website, and I'm, I'm happy to work with you individually. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Now, uh, when it comes to like weight loss, a lot, I'm pretty sure a lot of what we've talked about uh, because this is an area that I do, you know, focus on with regards to my business. Um, and, and a lot of times what I've discovered over the years is, of course, when it comes to losing weight, of yes, it is about the food that we eat, but it's also about the why we eat the foods that we eat. Um, and then it just compounds because if we're eating foods that are pretty much processed and, and things like that, then it's a cycle that we tend to kind of like struggle getting off of because of the, it might become an addiction, so to speak, such as sugar. And so I'm pretty sure everything that we've talked about uh, as it relates to, you know, uh, meditation, as it relates to detox, as it relates to oxidative stress, mm -hmm. all of these things can relate to your overall weight management of things, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the only ones, and I, let me not say the only, because I'm sure there are a couple, but the, the things that I can think of off the top of my head that we didn't hit. So I think we spoke earlier and I was saying to you that when I was younger, you used to just be able to watch what you eat, do a little bit of exercise and you could get your weight under control. Then when mm -hmm. I was out of medical school, it was just, you needed to watch what you ate do some exercise, and then maybe look at your thyroid and your hormones. Now it's much more complex. It's, it's, it's all the things we just said. But two of the areas that I think that we didn't mention other than stress and the detoxification, needing to support detoxification, oxidative stress, um, 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 your gut health is a big one, but also hormonal health. So looking at your sex hormones, are they balanced optimally to support being able, one, to have the energy and motivation to exercise, but able to build muscle. So one of the things I deal with is my perimenopausal and menopausal women who work out with 
with you, Todd, not you specifically, but with mm -hmm. someone yeah. like you and mm -hmm. they can't, they can't build muscle and they're yeah. in the gym all the time. And their trainer doesn't understand why they can't build muscle. Hormones may be a reason for that. Um, thyroid is less about muscle, but your ability to have an optimal metabolism stress when you're stressed, all bets are off. Nothing's going to happen optimally when you're stressed because you're over here in fight or flight where your body's just in survival state. Come over here and rest and restore. Detoxification can happen. Sleep can happen. Hormone balancing can happen, et cetera, et cetera. So those are some of the missing things that we have to look into. And then sometimes it gets even more complex beyond that. But it, it really is looking at how do all these six systems work together in order to support moving you into a more healthy weight versus kind of keeping you stuck. Because I know that you probably hear this too, the with women in particular, it just yeah. can be yeah. really challenging. And it's it's not, there's nothing, you're not necessarily doing anything wrong, meaning that you're not eating well or not exercising it can really be that there's some core imbalance that that we need to figure out what's going on for you and it's not simple anymore just just to be straightforward with you yeah yeah gotcha where does adrenal health play into all of this yeah it's that stress piece so if your adrenals are dysregulated okay. so that means it could, in my young folks that means you got your body's flooded with cortisol then that is usually less of a problem with weight because usually you're flooded with stress hormones and your body's still able to kind of do some work. It's usually when you get down the road and your adrenals are burned out and muscle docs don't really love that term, but when they're not working well, then your body mm -hmm. can't really make the hormones to keep you in a good, healthy state. And when you're stressed, all the other sy systems in the body are thought to be secondary. So your thyroid, your sex hormones, digestion, et cetera, everything else is not going to work as well because your body's feeling like it doesn't have enough of what it needs to actually do the basics to keep your body in balance from a state of stress. So the more that you can regulate and support the adrenals with good sleep, bringing stress down in your life, being in nature, working out, but not to an extent where it's creating more fatigue, the more you can do all those more restorative things for yourself, the more you can bring your adrenals into a better state of health. Wow. Mind, body, soul connection. Man. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is, once again, this has been a master class and, and just making some, connecting some of the dots. Um, because some of the things that I've overlooked uh, over the years, just, just the very thing of like adrenal health, uh, not really paying attention to that and how that is like the, 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 the capital of, of, you know, of this hormone, you know, system here, hormone system here. And, and wow. So thanks so much Doc, for, for coming on and hanging out with us for a few minutes. I truly, truly appreciate uh, what you're doing, like I said, but you're sharing today. And there's so much more that I want to pick your brain about. I'll be honest with you, because I, I, you know, I really enjoyed the way that you express it. It's not like from the, from a dictionary of like a uh, medical dictionary, but it's very broken down into layman's terms. So thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you for having me. And we, we need, we need you, Todd, because I have a lot of ladies who, they they need someone who can really tell them and support them in 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 getting in there and knowing how to use their bodies in a way that works for them and not against them. So thank you for what you yeah, do. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, my wife and I we uh, we work together in this whole effort. I love that. Uh, as she's a nutrition coach. Yeah, and and so uh, that's that's you know uh, we're actually working a group right now, uh, working with a group you know online you know, uh, and so it's been a, it's been an awesome experience, and so uh, this is this is our ministry our mission our mission and um, once again I, like I said I just want to thank you uh, for uh, hanging out and I want everyone to kind of like get your information once again where they can find you if you don't mind. Absolutely. So you can email me directly at drniowills at gmail.com. Go to my website, drniowills.com. 
And um, if you want to schedule an appointment, you, either of those is appropriate. And um, if you specifically want to get involved where I send out weekly or bi-weekly um, seminars with, with key tips and things, then email me and let me know and I'll put you on that list so you can get involved with that as well. Good deal. Oh, good deal. You made a fan of me, lady, I will say. Ah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm a fan. So once again, thank you so much. So everyone, thank you. I, like I said, as I always say, this has been a masterclass for me. And this is why I love to connect with these people and have them on because I get to learn so much. And so I hope that if I'm learning, you're learning. And uh, this is what it's all about. Uh, these people are out there in the trenches doing everything that they can do to help us live our best lives henceforth our show living your best life so once again thank you so much for giving us some of your time this afternoon morning evening or wherever you are in the world uh this is Todd Cheek signing off with another episode of living your best life I'll catch you guys on the next episode so y'all take care be healthy be safe take care bye <laughs>